One of the greatest features of Timbermate is its ease of being able to be coloured or stained or colour matched. Unlike all other fillers that are made with acrylics, latex, solvents, ours is 100% acrylic, latex and solvent free. So being latex, solvent and acid free, it is very, very easy to colour up using anything. So I'm just going to show you a few little tips and show you how easy it is to colour up. And one of our biggest, most important and probably the best thing about Timbermate when colouring is the colour you see when it is wet is always the colour you're going to get when you clear coat it. I'll mention this again, but let me just go through and show you what I'm actually going to do. What I have here is, I've taken Timbermate and I have it in two colours. We have natural or tint base and I've just used a colour called pine. Whatever I do to any of these colours by adding any of the stains, I will change its colour as long as I'm staining up and not staining down. What does that mean? I can add any darker colour to a pine and I will get the same colour as when I took a natural and did the same thing. Also, when it comes to colouring, the beauty of Timbermate, as I said, it is being non-acrylic or latex or solvent, is it takes all kinds of stains or coatings. So, whether you're using an oxide or a number, whether you're using food colourants which are water-based, whether you're using a stain, whether you're even using a spirit base, or even using a bit of oil, or even a bit of coffee, I'll change the colour for you. Let me show you how easy it is to do. What I'm now going to do is take a bit of natural putty, take some out of the container. Now just remember, on a cold day the putty might be a little bit hard. It's only because it's water-based and it's the water that's cold. So when you come to use it, you find it doesn't want to spread very nicely, or it's a little bit dry, or it's a little bit cold. Take a few drops of water, and just put a few drops of water on it and all of a sudden it's now ready to go. I'm just going to show you a few things about colouring it. Let's start off by just being taking a little few grains of instant coffee. If you have to colour up a little bit of putty, you don't have any stain, but you have to just make a little bit of brown putty. Just very, very easy to use. Just a drop of water on the instant coffee, mix it in with your putty, and before you turn around, you can even get a permanent colour. So, I'm just getting a, a brownish colour putty, very, very easy. And now I have taken a bit of putty and got myself a brown, a brown colourant. Now remember, the colour you see when it is wet is the colour you will get when it gets coated. That's very, very light. I've really just got out one shade. So let's show you a few other things with it. I'm going to take that same putty now and I'm going to add a little bit of stain. When I come to add stain, just take the stain, mix the stain in, and immediately I will change the colour of my putty. Just mix it in. And now I've got myself a brown, or as that colour would be, a teak stain. Now, the beauty of this is, if that's the colour I want, that is the colour I'll get. Now remember, I've just gone and used a water-based stain. I'm now going to use a spirit based stain. So we'll just add a bit of, of colourant there. I've deliberately used an, a rosewood colour. And now what I'll do is take the same stain now and mix it in again. And if you notice, and by the way, it mixes in very well, I'll get a bit of purple putty. And if I want to, I'll mix all that putty in together and just get an even colour. Now the beauty is, if that's the colour I want, if that's the colour I'm trying to match, if I compare my colour, the colour is now ready. Now, two ways I can work with this. I've now just made a stain that's equal in colour, which I can now compare to the product. If, for any reason, I want to now fill, I can use it straight away as a filler. I could also use the same natural putty, fill it, let it dry, and then put a stain over it, and I'll get an even colour. So, what I've now done is use a bit of spirit and use a bit of water. I can now use a bit of food colouring. So let's go along and just add a bit of green putty, see what we get. So I've now put a bit of green colourant in, which is food colourant, which comes out of the grocery cupboard. And now all of a sudden, I'm mixing a bit of green in here, and we'll probably end up with a khaki putty. So out of my natural putty, as I keep adding stain, and as I keep mixing colourant, all I'll do is I'll keep changing the colour of the putty. So whether I use water, oil, solvent spirit, 
even a few coffee beans to change the color, it doesn't matter what I do, the color will always come out as I want it to be. Now, as you can see, there's a khaki putty. From that color khaki, all I'll now do is let it dry. When it dries, don't worry about the fact that it will dry lighter. Don't worry about that. It's how it finishes. And it will always finish back to this wet color. So it's very easy to use, very easy to apply. It doesn't matter what you use, the answer is a pine putty. You can use it doesn't really matter what color I use. Once again, just to show you, I'll put it out over there. And it looks pretty dried out of the container. The container's been left open. As the container is left open on a warm day, it will start to dry out. Don't worry if it dries out. Just keep on adding a few drops of water. When working with a putty, if you find it's a little bit thick, doesn't want to spread very easily, just add a few drops of water and make it very pliable. As you can see, there we go. And I've got myself some putty. Now, what I'm actually going to do is I want to show you that you can mix everything together. So I'm going to just repeat what I did a few moments ago. I'm going to put a bit of spirit based stain in here. I'm going to put a bit of oil based stain in here. And I'm going to add a bit of food colouring. This time I'll use a bit of red. And I'll even go so far as to even put a few drops of oil. This is a bit of oil just to show you that the oil and the water don't mix. And if you look, look up very closely, you'll see that they are not mixing at all. There's just absolutely no mixing between the colours. And what's more is I'll put a few grams of coffee in there as well, just for good luck. Now, I'm going to mix all of this together now. And if you notice, you'll see that the water and the oil are not mixing. The spirit base is separating. Because the putty is so porous, all that will happen is mix the putty. If you find it's just dragging a bit on the knife, don't worry about it. A few drops of water on it, and all of a sudden, we've mixed it all in. So, there's water, oil, solvent, spirit, all mixing in very, very easily and giving me one colour. There we go. All mixed in and it's taken all the colourants and it's taken them evenly. How easy is that? So it doesn't matter whether you use water, oil, solvent, spirit, food colourants, oxides, ochres, umbers, coffee, coffee powder, or even so far as even a bit of curry, changes colour, might even change the smell. And it's very, very easy for you to be able to work. So don't worry about your base. Obviously, using natural or tint base is a better base to start with if you're using or trying to make a very, very light color stain. But if you're going dark, it doesn't matter what you've got in the workshop, use any of your putties, and that's how easy it is to work with. What you see when it is wet is what you'll get when you coat it. Don't worry about how it dries, worry about how it finishes. And your finish will always be as you see it in its wet state.